Hello everybody and welcome back to Stellaris, where we just had an archaeological site pop right at the end of the last episode. A group of large predators indigenous to, to Fakaninajad 5 were recently discovered to have made a lair in the ruins being excavated. Fortunately, the animals were hibernating and they were not disturbed by the passage of our archaeologists. The project is rapidly moving ahead. That was close. Excellent. Now, we've got a little bit of an economic issue going on here. No doubt about that. This is Pirate Fleet out in Bapagia, and we are definitely going to send these guys out to go deal with that. Now, this will arrive after the others, and that's actually perfect. We're super happy about that. So let's go ahead and head out there, deal with those pirates. That should fix our energy credit issue. Oh, there's another one here. I didn't realize that. Excellent. Upon finally touching down at the bottom of the crater, a mind-boggling discovery was made. Giant twisted shards of some hardened calcified organic material were found among the rubble thousands of them. Somewhere a few meters across, some the size of an orbital shuttle. As astonishing as it sounds, it now seems clear that the shards are the remnants of some enormous hatched egg. Based on the size and number of shell fragments, the egg must have been hundreds of meters across. Deep in the bedrock of Bonos B1, some tremendous creature hatched, and then proceeded to dig its way up to the surface, trailing deadly radiation in its wake. If it could do this as a newborn... Whatever it was, it's gone now, leaving no trace behind but pieces of eggshell and a yawning hole in the earth. Well, that's creepy. Okay, fantastic. Do we have another one? We have another one, too. Wow, okay. We've managed to extract some data fragments from a particularly well-preserved Bowel biocomputer fossil. This 10 million year old relic appears to contain a pedagog pedagogical? I actually don't know how to pronounce this word. Pedagogical, I think. But don't quote me on that one. Appears to contain pedagogical in information intended for immature members of the species. Not yet ready to receive the full range of the hive mind's neural connection, young Bauler saplings were introduced to growth techniques, horticulture, and nutrition in a more curated experience. These findings suggest a Bauer society prized terrestrial landscaping and ecosystem management, and were also highly dependent on it for their survival. And apparently this continues. The discovery of another ancient biocomputer bio remnant has yielded further insight into this plantoid hive mind's history. The Bowel appear to have originated from a single planet, its location unknown as mere plant life. Prehistoric Bowel were all clones of their parent plants, and gradually developed the capacity for hive consciousness over millions of years of slow, peaceful growth on their home planet. Okay, so we'll continue that. Now we're done with our excavations for now. And we really do need to deal with our piracy issue, and we need to overall deal with our trade route issue. Unfortunately, we're still capped on star bases for this exact moment, but that is okay. I do want to come in and get the Haven Sky Starbase upgrading. Excellent. And just checking in here, yep, that's all queued up. Bump it up to fast speed. All is looking good. I don't believe that we're currently terraforming up here. Among the asteroids around JQQ-17, a tree is drifting through the emptiness of space. An unprecedented and highly unlikely event. The tree is surrounded in a protective bubble reminiscent of an energy shield. Suddenly we detect some hostile space dwellers on approach. This coincided with some sap leaking through the tree's shield while we collected samples. Could it have agitated the, the creatures? We need to figure out what's going on. So we have a special project the for the tree, for the tree rather, and that's an encounter in Carenza as well, the Alif Menace. I'm guessing this is the same location. That is correct. We will immediately begin work on deciphering their language. We'll go ahead and have these guys work on that. Excellent. So we're going to retreat from Carenzo, and that is fine. Where is our construction ship over here? Ah, it's down in Belgium. That's going to be a good long time. Okay. Well, sounds good for now. Of course, we are also currently working on not wormhole stabilization. For some reason, I thought that we did have that pop up, but we did not. In Papagia, we're going to take out these pirates. Absolutely no problem. Get out of here, you pirates. That's right. We grow ever strong. So much for the pirates. This is fairly unsurprising. 
but it is unfortunate. Okay, so these guys have declared war on us. And we did expect that to happen fairly soon. So we need to do like a uh, humiliate war goal here, unfortunately. It's not ideal. But there we go. Okay, so the Tyrant of Fire is going to continue building mining stations. The Luminary of Creation is going to come up here to Weyo and build a starbase. And we do have our first contact event here. Upon entering Carenza, our sensors picked up strange readings. Dismissed at first as glorified asteroids, things quickly changed when it was discovered that these entities reacted aggressively to movement in space, even at a great distance. Observation of these entities, preferably from a safe distance, is advised. Okay, best viewed from afar. Keep it up. So, we're not hugely surprised that they declared this. However, what we're going to do here is we're going to immediately start constructing a corvette. We're a little low on alloys at this exact moment. This is unsurprising because we haven't figured, or rather finished all of this yet. But the question becomes, they're considered overwhelming to us, and that's probably because they've actually built ships. We can pivot there. The real problem with this is one of logistics, not one of production. And the reason why I say that is because our shipyard is all the way over here, and so is the majority of our ships. And in fact, all of our combat ships are over there. Now, they can attack us at Birkenmar, at Zanbor, or at Genum. And if they have access through these other territories, they may be able to attack through those as well. But we do have defenses in all of these locations. We are still working on upgrading this. I think for the time being, what we're going to do is we're going to sell off 10,000 minerals. We're going to use that to buy in a few alloys. Something like that. Then we're going to construct another shipyard in Trebano, I think. Now that's going to take a while to get built. We're not really expecting that to ramp up for a bit. That's okay. I'm actually going to cancel this Corvette construction here, I think. Well, if it's going to take a year, maybe I'm not going to cancel that. Now, we are quite unsurprised that they declared war on us. We knew that that was a possibility. In fact, we knew that that was a probability. So, the next thing that we need to do is hop into our sectors here. And we need to construct as many alloy foundries as we can. We need to make sure that every single world has, at least that has it available, has an alloy foundry on it. Indeed, many of these are lacking slots, but this one needs an alloy foundry. And this one needs an alloy foundry. Okay, so there's that. Now on Hearthsea, we're going to build an agriculture district. There we go. Okay, so next, what are we going to do here? The only reason they're overwhelming is probably because they've built to their force limit. However, if we look at their layout here, we almost certainly have a more powerful economy than they do. So here's what we need to do. We need to improve relations with the Destican Unity at this time. The Space Elf League is currently hostile to us. Hmm. What do we want to do here? We've got that Aleph Menace. We want to improve relations with the Space Elf League. I think they're fairly unlikely to declare war on us, because these guys are hegemonic imperialists. They're pretty likely to declare war, and the Destikans being a collective consciousness hive mind, it's honestly, I mean, they're belligerent towards us. We definitely do want to not have them declare a two-front war, if at all possible. Okay. So we need to wrap up this battle right now. And then 
we need to return both of these for repairs. Actually, this one's already good to go. So we're going to select this fleet. It didn't take any damage. And it's going to immediately begin heading out over here. That's going to take a very long time to get there. Well over a year. So we should definitely expect the system, or rather the station at Trebano to come online before we can respond to that. And that is the reason right there why we decided to go for Hyperdrive 3s. We don't have them yet though. So that is definitely a problem. We could think about building defense platforms over here. What are our defense platforms like? Okay. I think I would prefer having them be like an even mix for right now. We don't really know what these guys are using for their weapon systems. So there's that. Okay, well, we'll begin our pivot to a military economy. And once this updates over here with the trade route, we should be better off. I was definitely planning on working on our trade this episode, but I guess here we are. Okay. So all we can really do is humiliate these guys. Well, we'll see what ends up happening over here. We don't see any of their ships just yet. We have to assume that they have sim similar amounts of fleet sizes as us. But they've probably built closer to their naval cap. So that's definitely something to think about. Now, this ship here, and these guys are still heading back for repairs. This ship here is going to immediately go into the fleet manager. And we're going to build basically the same fleet as we have here. So we're going to add in five destroyers and 20 corvettes. It's going to be a while based on our alloys that we get that actually good to go. But we can get started on it. And that's going to be like just a pair of corvettes. Okay. So food is a small concern right now. Energy credits should improve over the next little while. All of our alloys at this point have to be allocated to the war effort. Okay. But we have to assume, just looking at the way these borders are laid out, that the Tizru Confederation here is not really capable of matching us economically. So their war, their war plan here is to... What, what's their actual war goal? Hang on. They want to take seven systems out over here. So their war, their war plan is to take that and try to force a peace as quickly as possible before we can bring our superior size to bear on them. That's their plan. They want to move in quickly. And we're going to have a bit of a tough time responding to it. I mean, good on them. They chose a good time for this. The last thing we want right now is to run out of food. We're going to put a, a buy order for not 100 food, but rather for like 40 food. There we go. And then we're going to put in a sell order for something along the lines of 200 minerals. Okay. So we're going to do that. Fantastic. And the real question is, when do they show up? I've already explained. Reroute the power converter to the auxiliary manifold. No, not that power converter. Ksk. Must I do everything my- Oh, customers! Welcome, please. We bear many goods. We have many wares, all carted safely through the stars for your convenience. What can you offer us? We have a leader, an excellent fit for the Democratic Association of the Majority of the Picklings. An engineer, nimble fingers, swift mind, very good with wires and long division. Give us 200 food and the leader is yours. No, we're, we don't care about an engineer right now. Okay. So we're going to continue to take forward here. We're at 187 alloys right now. We're producing 73 per month. The question is, how many do we think that they're producing? We're not 
super hard focused on a military economy right now, so that's definitely something to think about. I suspect they're probably producing a comparable number. The life signs observed within the toxic at atmosphere of Katana 4 are giant semi-organic machines. Like us, it seems like the creators of this facility appreciated a merging of the biological and mechanical. This alien industry appears to have been the cause of the noxious atmosphere on the planet, yet it's still operational. No other life signs remain on the world, and the creators of these machines must have let them running. Left them running. We can't quite ascertain their purpose yet, but their construction could surely help our understanding of engineering. So long term, those five alloys are far more valuable. And that's what we're going to take. Cool. Where was that? Here. Okay. So we're not going to have a science ship near there for a while. Or rather, a construction ship near there for a while. I feel like that's okay. For right now, I want to bank alloys until we know where the enemies are. Or this station finishes construction. One or the other. But that's going to be a while yet. We're only at 34%. And we're still going to have to build shipyards there. So that's definitely a concern, and that is going to put us over our starbase cap. So we're going to need to deal with our energy credit issue, but we should be okay on that front, in theory. A Gruner data crystal has been recovered on UL1M-12, dating to some 7 million years ago. The data crystal contains partially readable military records pertaining to the planet's invasion. Apparently, the Gruner were expecting some measure of armed resistance and were not impressed by the incredibly slow-moving Ba'ul. The record describes the ease with which the Ba'ul's delayed responses were circumvented in a highly derogatory fashion. See, this right here, the delayed responses, that is what we've got going on. We knew that this would be a potential issue, but we didn't know what of these three would be the first to declare. So, things will be interesting, for sure. The Tadaska Station is a trade hub, of course, and we're just going to keep working away over there. These guys have finished their repairs, and they're going to make their way up over this way. It's going to take them 1,200 days to get there. The Astrakian Starbase has finished. We are not going to continue to upgrade this just yet. The Damp Ruler of the Morning Star has finished its uh, construction over here. And to that end, it's going to go down to Hyamit. Should be fine. So this over here, once again, we are going to be banking alloys to construct over here. It will be much faster to construct here, even waiting for this to come online. Assuming that they don't attack between now and then, which they should. I'm honestly not sure why they haven't yet. We're going to grab the research stations and the mining stations over here. We do need to continue to work on our energy situation. This tech world here is not actually a tech world. For now, we're going to put in a generator district to help offset some of that. That may get changed later. The entities encountered by our fleet some time ago are new, horrifying life forms. Quickly nicknamed Space Amoeba following an analyst's gross misreading of initial sensor output, the creature is in fact larger than the average Pictic Pictish Corvette. There'd be a little harm in putting the monstrosities out of their misery for science, or some equivalent. We could do a Space Amoeba study, or we could do Easy Prey, and we're going to do Easy Prey for right now. We are being contacted by aliens. Okay, so that means that that is finished up and we need to talk to the space elves up here and improve relations with them however look at this they're now on cooperative these guys are still on belligerent last month it changed by zero okay that's interesting we're negative on food now and that's not great. This is allegedly a tech world here. We're going to put in an agriculture district here. Engaging the enemy. Okay. Prepare so their fleet parties. has been seen. 2074. I... 
feel like that doesn't win. They might win, depending on how much evasion they get. But look at this. We Oh, we don't have the intel. <laughs> Never mind. We do see that they are running shields, and they're a bit shield heavy. Yeah, so this is just a 517 fleet. This is definitely not their full fleet. But if they're running a little bit shield heavy, then we might want to make some changes here. These lasers will not be ideal. Maybe we should run disruptors. I think on our Corvettes, we're going to run disruptors for the time being. We'll save that. On our destroyers, we're already running plasma throwers and mass drivers. So we've already got bo boosts to both of those. I think the destroyers are fine as they are. So that should be okay. But I think the Corvettes running disruptors will probably be better for us. So we're going to get these ships here upgrading. There's not much of them, to be sure. The real question is, how does this battle go when they attack Birkenmar? We do have disruption field generators, which will reduce their shield hit points by 20%. So there is that. The question is, do they have another fleet behind this? And the answer is definitely maybe. We're only at six. Oh, they're attacking Zanbor. Okay, Zanbor is exactly the same. Except. This area has shield nullification. They're attacking a location with a pulsar. And they're shield heavy on their defenses. This seems interesting. Yeah, they're down to 1.7k. I feel like we win this. Okay. So, can we see what they're running now? No, our sensors can make no sense of the strange vessel, but... They're clearly running some form of pickets and green lasers. Okay. So that would be why they chose to attack a location without shields. Because they're running green lasers. So they're bad against shields, huh? Well, our tech is better for shields than it is for armor. That's very interesting to note. Fossils from what appears to be several species of aquatic animals have been found on the barren and airless surface of SSD-800. There are indications that the surrounding asteroid belt was created from the remains of a shattered planet, and these findings seem to confirm that theory. Judging by the fossils, the planet supported life and was at least partially covered by water. Cool. We also finished up this archaeological site. It feels kind of anticlimactic to be doing that instead of paying attention to this, but we gotta get this done. Our surface expedition has reported back about some astounding findings. The planet has multiple major cities, all abandoned but in quite good shape considering their age. The infrastructure and urban planning of each city is remarkably structured and harmonious, indicating a highly cohesive civilization driven by centralized collective ideals, perhaps even a gestalt consciousness of some kind. Based on the architecture and interior fixtures, the species that built all this seems to have been small fungoids, with a fairly low state of technical advancement. Where exactly they all went remains unknown. Okay. Advantage appears to be on our side here. But let's see. Okay, they have a retreated destroyer. That's a huge deal for us. Technology secured. Okay, there's a new faction. We don't really care about that. Star fortresses are now a possibility, but we should certainly go for Ceramo Metal Armor. They've chunked our armor, for sure. The question is, how does our hull stand up to this? They're losing destroyers. But this is spicy. 
Do they have another fleet on, on scope? No, they don't. They're taking huge chunks from this, but I think they might pull this off. They still have a lot of Corvettes here. But yeah, definitely the fact that they're running green lasers is why they decided to attack the Pulsar station. There's no doubt about that one. Okay. Down to 1.8. It's a bit of a nail biter, but they're going to win this. For sure. But they took some heavy losses. Okay. Well, we always knew that our delayed response was going to be the issue here, right? So where are we located in our response? We're a really long ways away, is the answer. This is our frigate, and this is our actual fleet. We're still 800 days away from up here. So this is going to be interesting, but they can't go too far over here. And actually... They took a lot of war exhaustion from that. And they're only down to, they're now down to superior against us. The Trebano station has finished. We're gonna put in a pair of shipyards. Now Trebano is behind Birkenmar and Genome, which without repairs and refit, they absolutely can't fight this station or this station. So they're kind of pinned in right now. That buys us time. And with that, it is time to put a cut in here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And next episode, we are going to hopefully fix some of these economic woes. Fingers crossed. But we're also going to work a bit on getting ourselves set up to fight this war properly. You can leave your offerings to the engagement gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings. And I will see you all next time.